Hello and welcome to today's webinar on passive versus active harmonic mitigation. Thank you for joining us. My name is Gennaro Cassell and I'm the marketing manager at Miris International. I'd like to introduce today's presenter, Tony Huvenars. He is the president and CEO of Miris, a registered professional engineer and a member of IEEE. Tony joined Miris in 1996, having previously held the position as Chief Facilities Electrical Engineer at IBM. He has over 30 years experience dealing with the issues caused by harmonics and has gained valuable insight in the resolution of power quality related problems. Tony has published and presented numerous technical papers on power quality and harmonics and we're very happy to have him as speaker today. In order to get the greatest value from this 50-minute presentation, we strongly encourage you to take notes and ask questions. We invite you to ask your questions at any time throughout the presentation. However, due to the number of people online today, your sound has been muted. Instead, you may input your question at any time into the question text box within the control panel located at the top right of your screen. We will answer your questions at the end of the presentation. I would also like to let you know that we are recording as we speak today, and that is one of the great advantages of registering and participating in Miris webinars. You will receive a copy of these recordings, and this will allow you to watch the webinar later at, at your own pace and at your own convenience. We will send you that link within a week or so, and now I would like to present our speaker, Tony Huvenars. Thanks very much, Gennaro. Welcome everyone to our webinar today on passive versus active harmonic mitigation. I'm encouraged by the large number of registrants for this webinar, but I'm not surprised. Harmonics are a serious issue for electrical power systems, and choosing the correct treatment method can be very daunting. Hopefully, our discussions today will make that decision a little easier. Harmonics and their related issues are encountered in a wide range of industries, and when severe enough, can contribute to unexplained downtime in critical environments. Harmonic disturbances, damage, expensive equipment, cause failure, and add expense through maintenance, replacement, and excessive energy consumption. Solutions to avoid these disruptions, high costs, and other risks are very important, and a proactive approach to power quality can help solve harmonic issues and prevent future problems. Let me start with uh, describing what can happen when the wrong solution is chosen uh, to treat harmonics. I've got four examples. This first one involves a, an oil rig supply vessel built in Brazil by Detroit Marine Diesel. It was originally equipped with active front end drives for the propulsion systems, but they could never get the equipment to work. Um, the high frequency noise um, injected by the switching of the IGBTs in, in the AFI drives uh, was causing their own equipment to fail. Ultimately, the entire propulsion electrical package had to be removed and replaced by another manufacturer's system equipped with a wide spectrum harmonic filter. Uh, this was a very costly um, problem for them with the uh, strip out uh, being o over two million dollars. Uh, this next app, uh, example is a parallel active filter that was installed on a solar equipment manufacturing site in Toronto, Canada. The problem that they were having was with a 48 volt DC power supply that was part of a PV panel tester. Um, as soon as they powered up that, that uh, tester, the power supply would fail within a few minutes. 
These failures began to occur after a 450 amp active harmonic filter was installed on another area of the, of the plant where they were trying to reduce the harmonics generated by the rectifiers they were using to produce DC to test um, inverters that they built, solar inverters. When I went to the site, took some measurements, uh, you can see the voltage waveforms to the right here on the screen. The voltage distortion was less than 1%, so by all accounts, uh, extremely low voltage distortion, well within um, recommended standards for harmonic limits. However, this voltage had a very high frequency ripple, and when I investigated that further, I found out that it was in around the 39th to 43rd harmonic. And the power supply when on the tester, when it was sitting idle, was drawing in high frequency, very high frequency currents. When I identified this and recognized the um, effect of the active harmonic filter, I suggested that they shut down the active harmonic filter and we went back and, and took some measurements. And as you can see here with the filter disconnected, the high frequency ripple disappeared. The spectrum on the current, uh, the high frequency harmonics introduced by the IGBTs were gone. Um, this is the current now being drawn, much lower levels of current. And the manufacturer of the active harmonic filter tried to adjust their input filter, their input passive filter. It didn't have any uh, significant effect. Ultimately, the only solution was to permanently turn off the active harmonic filter. Another parallel active filter installation that did not go well was one applied to a skydiving simulator in Lyon, France. Initially they used two active harmonic filters to treat the harmonics generated by the fan systems used for these skydiving simulators. Um, the AHFs had been disconnected because they couldn't get the fan systems to work properly, again due to the high frequency noise introduced by the AHFs. With the AHFs disconnected, the required harmonic limits were not being met. So the AHFs were replaced by two 700 horsepower wide spectrum harmonic filters. And the, with these filters, the harmonic limits were easily met. Here we show that the current distortion was reduced to just over 5%. You can see the current waveform is near uh, linear. And the voltage distortion was reduced to 2.65, well below um, the requirements uh, by the standards. And the fourth example here was an attempted use of phase shifting to on Thyristor Bridge in a, uh, an offshore service vessel. This vessel was equipped with DC propulsion drives and was purchased with the intent of upgrading with additional equipment such as remote operated vehicles and uh, cranes, additional cranes to service the offshore um, oil and gas industry. However, due to uh, multiple failures caused by the harmonic voltage distortion, it could not pass sea trials. Problems included loss in navigation, operational issues such as component failures in the crane controls and in the remote operated vehicles. This occurred especially while they were operating in dynamic positioning mode, which is uh, where the, the propulsion transformers are in their um, highest operation. Voltage distortion in that mode exceeded 24%. A system-wide vessel review was conducted to determine the cause of the equipment failures, um, and a solution was um, offered to replace the phase shifting transformers with uh, passive wide spectrum harmonic filters. Uh, with the filters installed, even in the most um, heavily loaded operation on uh, dynamic positioning, 
voltage distortion was well below below the eight percent requirement for the marine certifying body, and they easily passed their CE trials, and the ship is has been in, in fully operational since uh, October of 2015. So let's have a look at uh, the harmonics generated by variable speed drives and review the, the various options for mitigation. Um, here we show the schematic for a typical six pulse variable speed drive. We've got the input rectifier, three-phase six-pulse rectifier. Uh, there's often uh, DC line chokes. We've got our smoothing capacitors on the DC bus. And then that supplies an inverter section, which takes the DC and inverts it back to a simulated AC waveform for the motor. In this operation, the rectifiers will draw harmonic currents um, in this relationship, where the harmonic numbers present will be equal to any integer times a pulse number plus or minus one. And typically the the magnitude of the of each harmonic current is uh, inversely proportional to the harmonic number. So on a six pulse drive when you substitute P equals six into this equation you'll see that the predominant harmonics will be the fifth, seventh, eleventh, thirteenth, and seventeenth, and nineteenth. These are shown here on this spectrum, and the waveform is, is a typical double-humped um, Mickey Mouse ear type of, uh, of current input drawn by the drive. Multipulse VFDs utilize multiple rectifiers that are phase shifted with transformers to cancel harmonics. So a 12-pulse system is going to have two two three-phase six-pulse rectifiers, which are phase-shifted by 30 degrees. So in this example, we've got a delta, delta transformer, which would introduce a zero-phase shift, and then a delta Y connection, which would introduce a 30-degree phase shift. When you do that, harmonics, fifth and seventh harmonics predominantly are canceled, ideally, um, in a theoretical way. And the resultant harmonics that we'll see are 11th, 13th, and 23rd, and 25th harmonic. So I, again, this is an ideal arrangement. There's always residual harmonics due to phase shift uh, anomalies, um, power system conditions, voltage distortion, voltage imbalance, and so forth. But uh, in theory, the harmonics that would be present at 11th, 13th, 23rd, and 25th. In an 18 pulse application, we'll have three rectifiers supplying the inverter. These are phase shifted by zero, plus 20, and minus 20 degrees, and the resultant harmonics would be 17th, 19th, 35th, and 37th. In active front end or AFI drives, the input rectifier is replaced by a fully controlled IGBT bridge. So we can see the IGBT is shown here. So essentially the active front end drive has two inverter sections, so it is basically twice the size of a conventional six pulse drive. It is true that, that these can uh, these AFI drives can reduce harmonics um, in the low end. So if we're measuring up to the 50th harmonic, we will see a substantial reduction in the input current into the drive. But we need to consider the fact that these devices also introduce high frequency harmonics, higher frequency harmonics. Their main benefit and application is in, in the ability to um, convert power bidirectionally. So if you need, if you have an application where you can generate power from the load and feed it back into the power system, then the AFI drive is, is a good solution. But I would suggest that if the only reason we're putting an AFI drive in for treatment is for treatment of harmonics, then there are much better choices than an AFI drive. This is because the AFI is very expensive, but it also introduces higher order harmonics and common mode noise. It introduces EMI radiation, has higher losses, 
and is quite a complex device and requires startup and, and service by the manufacturer. In parallel active filter applications, IGBTs are used to inject harmonic currents into the power system to supply those currents required by the nonlinear loads. So we would install a CT to measure the current going into the loads. That CT would feed into the active filter, which then through, again, an IGBT or an inverter section would create and interject harmonics back into the power system to supply what the load requires. And if the load is drawing its harmonic currents from the active filter, it no longer needs to draw them from the load. So you're going to see a reduction in harmonics upstream. Again, these are expensive. Uh, in order to perform well, you must have an AC line reactor or a DC link choke on the variable speed drive to reduce the harmonics that the variable speed drive is drawing. Um, like the AFI drives, also introduces high frequency harmonics due to the switching of the IGBTs that are directly connected to the power system. They can be susceptible to background voltage distortion. And, as, and uh, again, they are quite complex, requiring startup and regular service by the manufacturer. But they can be uh, reasonably effective if applied properly in the right application. Um, in this example, there were two 300 amp parallel active filters that were applied to um, three 800 DC drives. So we show the current of the DC drives before the application of the active filter. We can see that the current distortion was 34%, predominant harmonic fifth. When we switched in the, the active filter, the upstream of the active filter now was drawing much lower current harmonics. Um, and by drawing lower current harmonics, the voltage distortion on the bus was reduced as well. So we can see here, without the filter, we were at 11% voltage distortion. With the filter, we're down at 3.7%. As mentioned earlier, there are, you know, the main issues with active, front end, or active harmonic filters is their reliability and the fact that they inject high-frequency harmonics due to this switching. Uh, in this particular application, I've been made aware that these active filters are no longer in operation. They've been disconnected. I'm not exactly sure why, but there are often issues associated with active harmonic filters that, that require their disconnection. The Wide Spectrum Harmonic Filter, or WSHF, is an input harmonic filter to treat harmonics generated by variable speed drives. As a simple passive device, it outperforms more complex solutions such as multi-pulse drive systems, active front ends, or active harmonic filters. It's been developed um, into the most reliable and best performing filter on the market. It'll reduce the um, power factor, sorry, improve the power factor by removing the harmonics um, in a full load on a Dial bridge application, the power factor will be near unity. It's generator compatible because the capacitor bank is designed to introduce very low levels of uh, capacitive reactive power. And it has the highest efficiency of all of the solutions that would be used to treat harmonics. In this slide, we uh, so sh show some factory tests of, of a filter. Um, this was applied on a 350 horsepower drive um, equipped with a, li a line reactor. So in a normal operation without the passive filter installed, there was 36% current distortion. That current distortion introduced 4.4% voltage distortion on the distribution bus. When we switched in the passive filter, you can see the uh, current became much more sinusoidal. Current distortion was 4.2%. And that reduction in current harmonics flowing through the power system lowered the voltage distortion to 1.2%. 
table here shows measurements taken at various load levels uh, from 25% all the way up to full load. Um, the RMS values of the currents, the reduction in fifth harmonic, so at full load we went from 110 amps to 5 amps. Seventh harmonic went from 37 down to 4.9, eleventh from 19 to 9.5 and so on. So the full spectrum of harmonics were reduced. THD went from 36 to 4.2. IEEE 519 is one of the standards that introduces total demand distortion. Total demand distortion reflects the relationship between total harmonic distortion and the actual loading um, on the system. So at full load, THD and TDD are the same. Uh, we can see at 50% load, the TDD is 50% of the THD. Because we take the TH, to calculate TDD, we take the THD and we multiply it by the actual um, current divided by the full load current. And that will uh, determine our, our TDD. So we can see we're well below, in this, with this application, this filter below 5% over the entire operating range. You can see the reduction in K factor, so there's no longer a requirement for upstream K-rated transformers. And the improvement in power factor, you can see we're virtually uh, unity power factor across the, uh, the full spectrum. And unlike active solutions, such as active front end and parallel active filters, the wide spectrum harmonic filter does not introduce any higher order harmonics. So here we took some measurements with a meter that was capable of measuring all the way up to the 500th harmonic. So on this scale we're showing all the way up to the 500th harmonic. On the y-axis we're showing the current, the percent current harmonics. The maximum scale here is 3 percent. 50th harmonic is, is here, so this is, these are the harmonics that are in the system, all of them below 3%, um, and no introduction of, of high frequency harmonics, which cannot be said for the active solutions. Next, let's, let's have a look at the standards that have been adopted for, for limiting harmonics. At the low end, um, up to, say, the 50th, the 40th, or 50th harmonic, we have IEEE standard 519. IEEE standard 519 defines the harmonic limits um, up to the 50th harmonic, but also states that um, higher frequencies uh, can be used if, if necessary. So, but most people apply IEEE 519 at the 50th harmonic or below. So at 60 hertz, in power systems, 50 times 60 is going to give you 3 kilohertz. So that applies to harmonics up to the 3 kilohertz. International standards, IEC, various standards here, they all are set at 40th harmonic. Typically, it's applied on 50 hertz systems. So in that case, it would cover the harmonics up to 2 kilohertz. The higher frequency, or EMI and RFI, or radiated harmonics, typically IEC 61800-3 is used to limit those. And this is the reason why many variable speed drives are equipped with EMI RFI filters. That standard starts at 150 kilohertz and, and goes above that. In North America, sometimes the FCC 47 CFR part 15 is applied. Uh, and for radiated noise, this starts at 9 kilohertz. So as you can see from here, there is a band of frequencies between 2, 3 kilohertz to 9 kilohertz where there's no standards that are applied. So we ask ourselves, is this a, a concern? Well, absolutely it's a concern because the IGBT switching frequencies typically fall between 2 kilohertz and 8 kilohertz, which is precisely within this band. Next we need to ask ourselves, 
why are we applying harmonic mitigation? Is it to truly resolve problems or simply to comply to standards? The AFI and AHF solutions may comply with the standards, but they often introduce bigger problems than they resolve. And this is just because the standards don't cover the range where they introduce high, higher frequency IGBT switching frequency harmonics. So AFI and AHF manufacturers will claim that their technology provides the best solution for treatment of VSD harmonics. But the reality is that they introduce these higher frequency harmonics, which can have more serious consequences than low frequency harmonics. They generate significant levels of ground leakage current, which can cause inadvertent ground fault trips and, and failure of sensitive equipment. And there have been known cases where the six pulse drives of the same manufacturer uh, on an application where that manufacturer's AFI drives are installed, the high frequency generated by the AFI drives raises the DC bus voltage of the six pulse drives, causing them to uh, fail on, on over voltage. So they often introduce their own problems. So this um, case study shows an application on, on a marine vessel. It's taken from a, a paper that was probably an IEEE paper that was published. And in this application, the variable speed drives that were used were AFI drives, but they could be configured to operate as a simple sixth pulse drive. So to simulate a rectifier operation. So the, opera, uh, the authors of the paper ran it in both modes. And we can see here, this is measurements taken from phase to ground voltage waveform. When it's operating as a six pulse rectifier, there are, is obvious high frequency noise on that waveform. But when the same drive is operated as an active front end, this is substantially increased. You can see them in the harmonic spectrum here. There is high frequency current or voltages introduced here, much higher levels when operated as an, as an AFI drive. The input current, the sixth pulse, shows very typical double humped waveforms, fifth and seventh being the predominant harmonics. This that will not meet the um, standards typically, but the, because of the, the fifth and seventh harmonics. But the active front end drive, although it had lower levels of the lower frequency, it definitely had evidence of a high frequency current being drawn at the IGBT switching frequency. They also took measurements of neutral to ground voltage when operating as a six pulse drive, fairly low levels of neutral to ground voltage. That certainly did drive some neutral current, but again, relatively low levels of neutral current. But in the AFI mode, much higher levels of neutral to ground voltage, which drove much higher levels of circulating common mode currents. And this next slide shows some measurements taken uh, from a, a paper, an, a, another paper that was written, again, a, a marine application. In this paper, they were looking at the harmonics generating being generated over the, the full harmonic frequency. And they're measuring the voltage um, on the generators in the, in the ship. And when measuring up to the 50th harmonic, this is a 50 hertz system, so 50 times 50 is 2.5 kilohertz. So up to 50th harmonic, the voltage distortion was only 1.68%. So well within the requirements of any of the standards whether they're the, the electrical standards or the marine certifying standards. But when they measured above the 50th harmonic, 2.5 kilohertz to 10 kilohertz, they found a band of harmonics with very high levels, 5%. Here we have 5% voltage distortion at the harmonics around you know, 3.2 kilohertz. 
which was the switching frequency of the AFI drives in this application. In this range, the total harmonic voltage distortion was 8.14% above the requirements of any of the standards. And they measured even higher, 9 kilohertz and above, again, fairly low levels. These devices were equipped with EMI R5 filters to, to reduce those levels of harmonics because there were standards and requirements. So if we look at the entire um, frequency spectrum from 0 to 50 kilohertz, there were 8.38% voltage distortion with the main contribution being in the range from 50th to 50th harmonic to 10 kilohertz. And a third example of an active front end drive, this was measurements taken on an electrical submersible pump in an oil field. You can see very clearly in the voltage, the high frequency ripple. This was measured to be 3.6 kilohertz or 60th harmonic, which was the switching frequency again of the uh, input IGBT inverter. And you can see the high frequency in the current as well. Another item to highlight is that many people have indicated to me that they prefer active solutions because they don't trust passive approaches. What I tell them in response is that if you don't like passive solutions, then you shouldn't use active solutions either because every active solution must have a passive filter in order to address the IGBT switching frequencies. Known as an LCL filter, these filters actually are more susceptible to power system resonance issues than a properly designed filter for a six pulse VFD. So when you get the, these are typically going to be tuned at much higher frequencies. When you add the impedance of the power system, it'll shift the resonance frequency of the LCL filter with the power system and could shift it to predominant harmonics that are on the power system. So let's look at resonance and see why that happens. Here we have a, a simple one-line diagram, source and, and its impedance, a nonlinear load being a variable speed drive which injects harmonics into the power system. Maybe we have a transformer in series um, of that nonlinear load. We have our Bus distribution, power factor correction capacitors might, might be installed and connected in parallel on that. And then we have other loads on the system. The equivalent diagram of this one line is shown here, where we have our nonlinear load injecting harmonics into the power system, passing through the transformer impedance, and then seeing the parallel combination of the capacitors and the power system impedance. So this is the power system impedance is the parallel combination of the source impedance and, and other loads uh, on the power system. Very, very difficult to calculate or to determine, but it is almost always an inductive. It's only, it's only not inductive if there's power factor correction capacitors um, that have overcompensated. So now we see that our resonance point here in the circuit is where the capacitive reactance curve and the inductive reactive curve meet. So at this point, the resonance frequency, the impedance of the system is essentially zero. There is resistance, of course, in the system that does help damp the resonance, but the inductive and capacitive of the system is virtually zero. So any harmonic voltage that's present on the power system at that at that particular frequency is going to drive circulating currents. And these circulating currents are going to go through the power system, the, the other loads in the power system, through the power factor correction capacitors. And as it circulates, it introduces more voltage drop due to Ohm's law at that harmonic number. That increases the, the voltage here and drives more current through the circuit. And this is what resonance is, and it'll circulate and it'll it'll increase the, the voltage harmonics and the current harmonics seen in the power system at that, at that frequency. When resonance occurs, it can create um, major problems, a failure of power factor correction capacitors and their fuses, surge suppression, 
damage, connected equipment damage, and in worst case, um, equipment shutdowns. So if we look at the power system and, and we understand that the power system is inductive, the only time a power system is capacitive is if it's overcompensated by power factor correction capacitors. So the power system is inductive. That will cause the inductive curve to move upwards. As the inductive curve moves upward, the resonance frequency shifts to the left or goes to a lower frequency, a lower harmonic number. Wide spectrum harmonic filters are tuned below the fifth harmonic. So if you have a shift due to the power system, it's going to shift you even further below the fifth harmonic and away from the predominant harmonics introduced by six pulse rectifiers, fifth, seventh, eleventh, thirteenth, and so on. But LCL filters used on active solutions are tuned much higher. So if they're tuned, they're tuned out here, they're connected to a power system, depending on that power system inductance, it'll shift that resonance frequency and it could shift it to a predominant harmonic on the system creating resonance. And one final item to um, identify is energy efficiency. Um, in this case, you know, the energy and the additional losses introduced by the active solutions um, do benefit the, uh, the passive solutions. Here we have the for information that was taken from literature of active harmonic filter manufacturers. There's um, a 75 kilowatt unit and a 400 kilowatt unit. We have the active front end drive um, and our watts losses taken from the literature were 4.1 kilowatts for a 75 kilowatt unit, whereas their six pulse drive, same manufacturer, only introduced 1.9 kilowatts of losses. When you add the losses of the passive filter to that, you end up with total kilowatt losses of 2.7, which is substantially lower than the losses introduced by the active front end drive. The difference in efficiency was 1.7%. 400, 400 kilowatt, rather, similar relationship, also had a 1.7% difference in inefficiency. So we can take that difference and we can do a quick analysis. Here we've taken a 400 kilowatt diesel electric thruster application uh, from some data on typical operating modes of thrusters. We determined that the average load is about 33 and a half percent. So this is the, the operating hours um, for the thruster. There's a difference in efficiency of 1.7%. The diesel generator consumption determined, for, again, from uh, information from a, from a generator manufacturer is 0.4 liters per kilowatt hour. And we used a cost of 80 cents per liter for the fuel cost. We calculate the energy savings per year we see that the fuel consumption with the um, or the savings, the, the net reduction in fuel consumption is almost 8,000 liters per year, which works out to over $6,000 per year in that operation. So typically, you can see paybacks of less than one to two years on the passive harmonic mitigation equipment alone. Then when you factor in that the comparative act, active front end drive system is a higher capital cost, um, then that justifies the application even further. And of course when we're removing or reducing the energy consumption in a generator application, but also even in a utility application, we're going to reduce the emissions. And if we do you know, a quick calculation on, on, on this savings and reduction, you can see that over a 10-year period, 
um, there's a substantial positive effect on, on the environment. Let's take a, a few minutes also to look at the other, one of the other passive uh, options for treatment of harmonics, which is multipulse systems. One of the issues with multipulse is that performance drops off dramatically when there's voltage imbalance or background voltage distortion. Whereas with a wide spectrum harmonic filter, the performance uh, maintains itself quite well, even with those uh, severe environments. Uh, there's higher efficiency with the wide spectrum harmonic filter than multipulse drives because the multipulse drives require transformers to do the phase shifting, which introduce additional losses. The package is typically smaller, less expensive, and because of the reduction in losses, is a more lower operating cost associated with it. In this graphs, we show um, the performance with voltage imbalance. So there's a wide spectrum harmonic filter here in the dark blue, and an 18 pulse drive system in the pink grass. On the 18 pulse, when we apply it with as balanced a voltage as we could get in our in our test lab, you can see there was very good performance. This is our current distortion here. So there was excellent performance when there's less than 1% voltage distortion. Sorry, voltage imbalance. But with 1% voltage imbalance, the performance started to drop off. Whereas the passive filter performance held held during both no imbalance and 1%. With 2% imbalance, the 18 pulse drive system basically was no better than a standard 6 pulse drive. This is because with voltage imbalance, the effect of cancellation due to phase shifting drops off dramatically. So a little bit of voltage imbalance can cause a dramatic reduction in the performance, whereas with the passive filter, uh, the performance held up quite well. Also with background voltage distortion, you can see if we introduce zero up to 5% voltage distortion, the wide spectrum harmonic filter here, just around 5% current distortion, uh, with no background voltage distortion, all the way up to 5%, we were still under 8% volt uh, current distortion. That's full load. At 50% load, you can see the performance also held, held up fairly well. The 18 pulse system, the performance dropped off dramatically as we approached higher voltage distortion levels, and certainly at lighter loading levels, the performance was rather poor. And from an efficiency perspective, we took measurements with the 18 pulse and with the 6 pulse in the filter, and the difference was about 2 to 3 percentage points across the, the full load profile. If you do a quick calculation, you can determine significant savings associated with that reduction in losses. In an example uh, where, a field example where comparisons were done between a passive filter and six pulse drive and an 18 pulse drive, is again the skydiving simulators. Here, they had been using an 18 pulse drive system to feed the uh, fan motors. And our customer who was packaging the filter with their six pulse VF VFD wanted to show the difference and compare the two. So they set up this field situation. So when it was running as an 18 pulse drive, there were two fan speeds. The higher fan speed, or 889 RPM, the drive was running at 60 hertz and drawing 190 kilowatts. At the lower speed, it's around just under 56 hertz and 152 kilowatts. When they switched to the six pulse drive with the wide spectrum filter, at the higher fan speed, the power consumption dropped substantially to 183 kilowatts. So this is real power, a real power reduction. But even more interest is that under the lighter or the slower fan speed, the drive actually operated at an even lower speed because the passive filter improved the operation of the drive system. 
So they got 818 RPM with only 55 hertz driven by the drive. That reduced the power consumption even further to 143 kilowatts. So when you look at this at the higher speed, there was a 6.9 kilowatt reduction. At the lower speed, there was a 9.2 kilowatt reduction. So a 3.5% savings at the higher fan speed and as much as a 6% savings at the lower fan speed. So substantial reduction. And of course, the, the customer did decide to go with the passive solution in the end. So finally, I just want to talk a little bit about single phase, phase to neutral loads. I'm just going to present. Uh, Quite often, active harmonic filters are used to deal deal with the parallel active harmonic filters are used to deal with the harmonics generated by single phase phase to neutral loads. Um, there are passive solutions that that are more effective, less costly, um, and and every bit of as uh, effective. So, in a single phase application, the current being drawn is a single pulse. It contains much higher levels of harmonics. Again, if we follow this equation, it's a two-pulse scheme here. And the harmonics then, if you put P equals 2, you're going to see third, fifth, seventh, ninth, and so on. So all the odd order harmonics, predominant ones being the third and fifth. When we had linear loads, such as an incandescent light bulb, and we shared a neutral with three phases, the currents flowing on each phase would end up canceling um, in the neutral. So if you can see at this particular point in time, there was a slight negative current on phase A, positive current on phase B, negative current on phase C. So there was a resultant residual current flowing back on the neutral. Similar at this point, positive on A, negative on C, B, negative on C. So we're always going to have less current the worst case scenario is the same current in the neutrals we have in the phase conductors. But with nonlinear loads, so many lighting loads, uh, computer systems, uh, new LED lighting systems, uh, they will draw current in pulses. These pulses are still phase shifted 120 degrees, but now when they combine in the neutral, the pulses are additive. So you can see here there's there's a pulse on A, but there's no current on B to cancel with it, and no current on C to cancel it. So we get a pulse back on the neutral. And this happens all the way across the waveform. Now what we have is where here we have one period. We have one, two, three periods, or third harmonic is predominant current returning in the neutral. So we end up with heavy neutral currents, overheating transformers, high neutral to ground voltage and high voltage distortion. Simple passive device that can be used is uh, zigzag transformers, auto transformers, and phase shifting zigzag auto transformers. We show here the current normal flow without the device. When the device is connected in parallel, it will draw off the currents through the filter and back to the loads. Here's an example of an installation where we also did the phase shifting to treat fifth and seventh harmonics as well. The load current was, in this case, 106%, very high, very high harmonics, third, fifth, seventh, and ninth. Upstream of the passive filter application, we were getting near linear current, much lower current THD and K factor. So the neutral current dropped from 111 amps to 18, which lowered the neutral to ground voltage, which is the result of current on the neutral creating voltage drops on the neutral. It went from 6 to 1.6. Current distortion went from 64 to 14. This dropped the voltage distortion from 11% to 2.6%. We also improved power factor simply by removing the harmonics from 0.76 to 0.95. And one final application, and we'll wrap up. This was a, a film studio uh, that was set up uh, near the Boston area. They had not uh, oversized the neutral when they fit up the facility in the first place. And as they looked at the nonlinear lighting loads that they were going to apply to it, 
they had determined if they were going to rewire the facility to handle the neutral current, it would have cost a quarter of a million dollars. This is, you know, the example of the lighting systems that were going on. So when one phase was turned on the lights, there was a single pulse of current measuring in the neutral. When they switched on another phase, there's, it added another pulse on the neutral. And when they turned on the third phase, it added the third pulse. So you can see that we ended up with the third harmonic in the current. The, the phase current um, went, ended up being um, much less than the neutral. The neutral current ended up being much more than, than the phase current. So we introduced the passive solutions. Um, dropped the neutral current from 154 amps to 4.4 amps. You can see the current measured here, so 154 amps, predominantly third harmonic. Here's your scale at 200 amps. With the filter installed, scale is 10 amps now, 4.3 amps. So a dramatic reduction. So we can deal with the single phase harmonics with passive solutions just as well as we can the three-phase harmonics introduced by variable speed drives. So in summary then, harmonics generated by nonlinear loads require treatment by effective means of harmonic mitigation. Both passive and active methods are available. Serious problems can arise when the wrong form of harmonic mitigation is used. Active solutions generate high-frequency harmonics, which can often cause worse problems than they are trying to resolve. And multipulse do not perform well in environments with high background voltage distortion or voltage imbalance. And both introduce higher losses than you would get with a passive wide spectrum harmonic filter um, that therefore uh, performs, performs better than those, those other solutions. So that wraps up the uh, seminar. So now um, let's see if there are some questions. Uh, from our attendees. Thank you, Tony. We're now going to begin the answering the questions submitted during today's presentation. As a reminder, you still can submit your questions through the question pane in your attendee control panel. Now, for this question and answer session, I'd like to hand over the microphone to Alex Huvenars, who is our sales and applications engineer at Miris. He will be directing the question and answers that we've received during the presentation. And now I would like to welcome Alex. Thank you, Gennaro. Um, the first question we have asks, what instrument do you use to measure harmonics above the 50th harmonic? This is, a, this is an excellent question uh, because there are not that many instruments on the market today uh, that measure above the 50th. There certainly are a few, though. Um, I know that um, there's a, an L-spec meter that'll measure above the 50th. There's a Dranitz meter that'll measure above the 50th. There's a, a P-cube meter that measures above the 50th. So there are a few of them out there, but you have to look hard to select them. Um, I think more and more instrument manufacturers will be, as they understand this issue, we'll start to uh, introduce models that will measure above the 50th. Okay, the next question is, um, someone's asking, they've had issues in the past with passive harmonic filters boosting the voltage at no load, causing overvoltage trips. Has Miris addressed this issue? Yes, absolutely. Um, there are certainly various manufacturers of input passive filters. Uh, some better than others. Uh, there are many that will introduce uh, voltage boost at light loads and therefore require capacitor switching contactors um, in order to disconnect the capacitors um, when, when the drive is lightly loaded. Uh, they also can introduce high reactive power that makes them incompatible in generator applications. But the Maris filter design is, is designed with low capacitive reactants and lowers the, the voltage boost. Our voltage boost, maximum voltage boost is 2.5% um, at, at no load conditions. 
and also reduces the reactive power, making it compatible with, with generators. So that uh, voltage boost has not been an issue with, with our filters. Okay, the next question is, where are the comparative voltage measurements taken between six pulse and AFI drives? Are they at the input of the bridge or the input of the filter, input filter of the bridge? Okay, the measurements were taken at the input for the six pulse, at the input to the passive filter, and for the active front end, at the input to the LCL filter, or the input to the drive, which has the built-in built -in LCL filter. Uh, the next question is, can you provide a functional description of a wide-spectrum harmonic filter? In other words, I think, what is a passive harmonic filter consisting of? Sure, so the wide-spectrum harmonic filter has um, basically three, three main components. There is a main locking reactor um, on the input that's a series-connected reactor. There's a parallel tuned branch, so there's a reactive component, a reactor component in the tuned branch, and that's where the capacitors are connected. And then there's a compensating reactor on the output um, to improve performance and, and reduce the, the voltage drop across the, uh, across the filter. So that's a typical configuration. And the, in, in our design, these are built on a common core. Um, the, the, the three sets of reactors are built on a common core. Um, the next question is about maintenance. They're asking about maintenance. What maintenance requirements are there for a wide spectrum harmonic filter in our case a linear? So what we would recommend is that the filter be checked once a year um, and the capacitance um, be checked um, at that time. Uh, most passive filters the weak point is the capacitors. In our design, uh, we have designed it around a capacitor that um, performs much, much better in severe environments. Um, we've been using this particular capacitor for the last five years, and I can proudly say that we haven't had one field failure on a capacitor in those five years. So we expect that to continue. Um, but it is important um, to, in a, in a passive filter design, to ensure that the capacitor is a robust, robust capacitor and one that can stand up to the rigors of the real world applications, which include background voltage distortion and, and voltage imbalance. Okay, the next question, we have a couple of questions relating to uh, sizing of lineators uh, on multiple loads. Uh, the first, they're both kind of getting to the question of if you have an application where you have multiple um, drives, can you treat, feed them from one single uh, linear or wide spectrum? Yeah, absolutely. Um, basically, um, if you have your multiple drives, you have to determine what your maximum load will be uh, with uh, operating those multiple drives and then just size the input filter to that maximum loading. We have many applications where where that is done. In fact, um, with our filter, we've got designs as large as 3,500 horsepower. So these are very large filters uh, there's, and they're at low voltage. So this is very, they're very rarely applied on just a single drive. So those large filters typically will feed electrical distribution that, that feeds multiple drives. Applications typically are marine systems and propulsion systems and also um, offshore or drilling rigs, uh, particularly the offshore, offshore drilling rig market. Uh, the next question is, do you derate for high altitude beyond 1,000 meters? Okay, there, there is a derating factor. Um, we, de we, uh, we have a version of our filter that is called an extreme duty model. That extreme duty model is designed to handle much higher background voltage distortion environments, much higher ambient temperature environments, and the elevation uh, requirements when you go up in elevation. So our standard filter 
would perform performs fine in with voltage distortion all the way up to eight percent. Um, no competitive filters will tolerate that kind of level of voltage distortion. Um, most of them say that the voltage distortion can't be above zero, which doesn't exist in power systems today, of course. Um, so we can handle the higher levels of voltage distortion. We can handle um, ambient temperature up to 40 degrees C, and we can handle elevations up to 1,000. In the extreme duty model, we can go to background voltage distortions of 12%. We can go to um, ambient temperatures of up to 55 degrees C and the higher ambient levels as well. So our recommendation would be to select our extreme duty model in high uh, elevation applications. Um, the next question is about uh, diagnostics. Um, I guess in a situation where our filter um, had to experience a failure or any kind of over temp condition, uh, are there any internal diagnostics that can be done to tell us of those conditions? Absolutely. Um, we've developed an optional um, filter, optional meter um, that can be ordered with the filters. This meter will monitor our capacitors, monitor the temperature in our reactors. It can also be connected on the input of the filter and do full power monitoring. So it will give you voltage and current, power, kilowatts, KVA, KVAR, and harmonics, uh, up to the 63rd harmonic, current, current harmonics and, and voltage harmonics. So that is an option um, if somebody uh, chooses it. Uh, it, is, it is standard on our larger filters, and our really large filters, optional on the smaller ones. Um, the next question is about power factor correction. Do you suggest usage of a harmonic filter with power factor correction at the bus? Um, what precautions should be taken when engineering a filter to such requirement? Okay, in, in many ap applications, um, the removal of harmonics will actually restore the power factor to near unity and, and is, is often the only um, requirement um, to increase power factor. Um, there are certainly some applications where the reactive power and lower power factor is the result of inductive loads um, or displacement power factor. An example of that would be a thyristor bridge operation or fixed speed motors. If you also have variable speed drives and you have those other loads, then you can treat the harmonics with a passive filter and the residual inductive reactive power can be treated by uh, power factor correction capacitors. Um, what's important is that we don't overcompensate on the capacitance because if you overcompensate on the power factor correction capacitance then you could introduce a resonance condition. But if you don't overcompensate then the two can co coexist very easily. Um, I guess this one relates back to the one recently about uh, our extreme duty model. If a filter is oversized for the load is its performance affected? Yes, um, all forms of harmonic mitigation are affected by loading levels if they're lightly loaded. Uh, uh, other than, I guess, an active filter, parallel active filter. Parallel active filters perform even uh, under lighter loads. But most other, other forms of harmonic mitigation are going to have higher current distortion at lighter loads. So if you oversize a filter, then you can never get to the, the higher loading conditions, so you will never get to optimal um, current distortion performance. So again, that's why our recommendation is where you, you think you need to oversize because of environmental conditions, we would recommend the use of our extreme duty model. That, that then doesn't require um, oversizing. Okay, we had a question about um, the slide that showed the six pulse waveform showed 80% of the harmonics in the fifth harmonic and referenced the one over H relationship that was listed that they're asking for us to. Okay, yeah, that relationship is more of an approximation. I should actually show an approximate, approximate um, symbol rather than an equal symbol in that in that slide. 
Um, the exact magnitudes will vary dramatically, uh, depending on whether the you know the rectifier has an input line reactor or an output uh, DC, or sorry a DC link choke, whether the power system impedance is high, you know a, a weak system or a stiff system. All of those things factor into the actual harmonics that are being drawn at each, at each frequency. Um, what's important is the, the relationship, is that if the harmonic is present by the, you know, H equals NP plus or minus 1, if there is a resultant harmonic present for that, then the lower the harmonic number, the higher the magnitude, typically. So that's, it's that, it's that ratio or relationship that's important, not the exact, exact magnitudes. Um, okay, the next question is uh, um, about switching frequencies of uh, active harmonic filters. And they're asking, is there any safe switching frequency, uh, for example, this cited uh, above 20 kilohertz, would that be considered a safe switching frequency? Yeah, certain, certainly the higher the switching frequency of the IGBT, um, the easier it is to filter that that frequency, um, and if it is filtered well, then that will be a better solution than the lower the lower switching frequencies that are much more difficult to to filter effectively. And mo most manufacturers will then cut corners on on the filters, and and that's why we start to see these these. Um, IGBT switching frequencies on our power systems. So yes, the if if the IGBTs can be switched at a, at a faster, or higher fre switching frequency, you will reduce this effect. Uh, what impact does the DC bus capacitance have on input harmonic and system resonance? Um, the DC bus capacitance. Um, doesn't typically um, introduce a problem with resonance on the power system side. The power system resonance is typically the result of the harmonics being interjected by the variable speed drives and the, the power system resonance. So the power system resonance is going to be, if you have a filter, the filter's capacitance banks is much larger than a DC bus capacitance bank, so it, it will have an effect um, if you have power factor correction capacitors. Um, I, don't, I don't see a big uh, issue related to the DC bus capacitance and, and system resonance. Sorry. Did I did I not get that question? Um, um, so there are, someone's asking about um, single phase power supplies and wanting uh, three phase load conditions. Do we have anything that can help with that uh, solving that issue? A single phase power supply, and you want to and you want to supply a three phase load. I I think that's what the question is. Um, there is an application where variable speed drives are used to supply a three-phase motor when only single phase is available. Um, in that application, we do have a device that the uh, an input filter designed specifically for that that will reduce the harmonics and actually improve the operation of the variable speed drive and, and actually uh, reduce its uh, derating requirement. So in that application we do. In general, if you just want to get you know, single phase to three phase, um, there's, you know, we, don't, we don't really have a, a solution that'll do that. There, there are options out there, um, typically like generators that'll do it. Um, UPS systems that can do it, that sort of thing. But uh, if if your specific application is a is a variable speed drive, is a is a larger motor, then we have a good solution for that. It's called our one Q three. 
Um, a question here about a manufacturing plant with multiple sources of harmonics. Which would, what would you recommend to put in place, base place in front of a three-phase UPS to filter harmonic distortion? So it sounds like, I don't know, I guess it wouldn't be for the UPS, but maybe for a load that is supplied from the UPS? OK, so UPSs typically um, are designed with, most UPSs are designed with some form of harmonic mitigation on the input. They will generally use uh, thigh resistors to, to convert AC to the DC. The DC then um, is where the, the batteries are connected. Um, so we'll charge the batteries and discharge through the DC and then we we'll go through inverters and supply the loads. So because there's, there's, a, there's a demand to limit harmonics, most UPSs are built with um, some kind of input, either sometimes they're active, uh, sometimes they're passive solutions. Um, if there's a UPS application that doesn't have harmonic mitigation, then their, the wide spectrum filter can be applied. Okay, we've had a few, just so I figured I'd mention this, we've had a few questions about getting copies of the presentation. Uh, we will be sending out uh, copies of, to all our registered attendees. So if you have asked that question, you will be getting uh, an email with that uh, info in it. Um, I think that's most of the questions. Um, I see one question about second order harmonics. Okay, second, harm, second, or, second order and even harmonics are normally not present on power systems. Typically, there's two things that would result in those in that, that harmonic, the even harmonics being present, and that is that the device is malfunctioning. So if you have a, a, a rectifier of some sort, and it's and it's drawing even harmonic. You got a problem with that with that device, or you've used a half wave rectifier. Half, nobody should use half wave rectifiers today. They're still out there on occasion, but half wave rectifiers are disastrous because they they introduce second, third, fourth, fifth, seventh, uh, fifth, sixth, seventh, the full spectrum of harmonics virtually impossible to properly mitigate. So typically, if you have a second order harmonic, if you want to you know, sp specifically uh, talk to us about that application, we can, we can make some recommendations. Okay. Um, just got a new question, maybe a follow-up to the previous one. Does capacitance of the DC, so it was about the impact of the DC bus capacitance. Is it, does capacitance of the DC bus higher or lower have any impact on the impact Yes, um, certainly um, with your DC bus capacitors, um, the different, different DC bus capacitance will result in different harmonics being drawn by the rectifier. Same spectrum, you know, 5th, 7th, 11th, 13th, and so on, but you can get much higher levels um, if you have, have less DC bus uh, capacitance. So um, that can be a concern. We have computer simulation uh, software uh, known as Solve. Um, it's a free software available on our website that you can download. In that analysis, you can actually select the, we, we will use default capacitance values, which are, you know, nominal and normal normal capacitance values for the different sizes of the of the variable speed drives, but you can you can put um, a, a, a capacitance value in um, if you know it to be different, and you can show those the, the differences in the effect that they have. Okay, I think that does it for all the questions. Thank you, everyone, for all your questions. Thank you, Tony and Alex, and thank you, everyone, for attending today's webinar passive versus active harmonic mitigation. If you have any other questions or have a specific application you would like to discuss, we'd love to hear from you. Please contact one of our sales team members at 1-888-866-4787 or by email at sales at nearestinternational.com. 
On behalf of Miris International and our presenters, thank you for joining us today and have a great day.